Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is delta to y and y to delta conversions with complex impedances. Our objective is to convert between two common three terminal relationships known as delta and y configurations. Establishing an equivalency between these two configurations allows us to substitute one for the other in circuit analysis scenarios necessitating simplification. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has watched the resistive delta and y conversion lecture way back in the Basic Electronics 1 DC Circuit Analysis playlist. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, it is presumed the viewer has a modicum of spatial awareness and organizational ability. Assuming you possess the aforementioned qualifications, you'll be happy to know that delta and y conversions with complex impedances is almost a direct repeat for the procedure featuring solely resistive elements, the only change being that angles are now incorporated into our analysis. Both delta and y configurations are characterized by a three terminal relationship of three impedance elements. A delta configuration, as the name implies, is a triangular relationship of three impedance elements identical in shape to the Greek letter delta. A delta configuration of three impedance elements on its base, lying on its left side, standing on its head, or lying on its right side is still a delta configuration. Also, if you turn a delta configuration such that it's balancing on its head and spread out the bottom node, you'll get something shaped like a pi symbol, and delta networks are sometimes referred to as such. If you possess the spatial awareness of a goldfish, you should recognize all these different configurations as being merely different permutations of the same delta configuration. A Y configuration is also a three terminal relationship of three impedance elements, only this time the three impedance elements go from the three external nodes into a central node forming the shape of a Y. This central node may or may not be accessible to the larger circuit. Similarly, a Y configuration of three impedance elements standing straight up, lying on its left side, standing on its head, or laying on its right side is still a Y configuration. Also, if you bend down the arms of the Y, you can get something shaped like the letter T, and Y networks are sometimes referred to as such. Again, if you possess the spatial awareness of a goldfish, you should recognize all these different configurations as being merely different permutations of the same Y configuration. Sometimes people spell out the letter Y as in W-Y-E for mysterious and inexplicable reasons. Also, sometimes Y relationships are alternatively known as star relationships, as in a really lame star with only three radiating arms. All these alternate titles are stupid, and I really wish people would just stop using them. A delta relationship looks like a delta triangle, and a Y relationship looks like a Y. You can remember this. Key to establishing an equivalency between delta and Y and Y and delta configurations is establishing equivalency at each external node. Any larger circuit, source, or sources seeing the three terminal network should be none the wiser to the substitution. The transformation process is admittedly a little busy. However, if you just stay organized, this should be as easy as convincing your lazy lab partner that pro wrestling is real. Techniques may vary from instructor to instructor and textbook to textbook. However, here's the method I use to stay organized. Start by assigning the three external nodes letters and explicitly identify the impedance elements attached to each node and differentiate between them. Your specific circuit may use different nodes or different impedance element identifiers, but the general mapping of a delta configuration to a Y configuration, and alternatively from a Y configuration to a delta configuration, should always use the same map, the same nodes, and the same impedance element designations. In summary, draw a map, use the map, use the formulas accompanying the map. Delta to Y conversions and vice versa are a simple matter of following directions and staying organized. A delta network is characterized by a triangular relationship of three impedance elements with three external nodes. Start by assigning the nodes letters, as in A, B, and C. Now differentiate between the three impedance elements by assigning them subscripts. My advice is to simply pick a direction and stick with it. In this case, I'll pick the left hand point and just go clockwise. I'll call the impedance element between node A and B, ZAB. 
Similarly, I'll call the impedance element between nodes B and C, ZBC. And finally, I'll call the impedance element between nodes C and A, ZCA. Alternate permutations of delta and y conversions might use different means of differentiating the three impedance elements, but if you follow this technique and you use this map, you cannot get this wrong. A Y configuration is characterized by a centrally connected relationship of three impedance elements with three external nodes, forming the shape of a Y. Again, start by assigning the nodes letters, as in A, B, and C. Now differentiate between the three impedance elements by assigning them subscripts. I'll call the impedance element directly connected to node A, Z1. Similarly, I'll call the impedance element directly connected to node B, Z2. And finally, I'll call the Y impedance element directly connected to node C, Z3. Again, alternate permutations of delta and Y conversions might use different means of differentiating the impedance elements, but if you follow this technique and you use this map, you cannot get this wrong. As a memory aid, the Y configuration can be placed inside the delta configuration as follows. Again, delta impedance ZAB is between the nodes you choose to call A and B. Y impedance Z1 is connected to the node you chose to call A. Similarly, delta impedance ZBC is between the nodes you chose to call B and C. Y impedance Z2 is connected to the node you chose to call B. Finally, delta impedance ZCA is between the nodes you chose to call C and A, and Y impedance Z3 is directly connected to the node you chose to call C. This is true if you spin this configuration on its side, stand it on its head, or tilt it at some odd angle. Let's start by learning to convert a delta configuration to an equivalent Y configuration. The general formula for this conversion is as follows. To find the specific Y impedance element that would establish equivalency at that node, multiply the two delta impedances connected to that node and then divide it by the sum of all delta impedances. You can use this simple descriptive formula to derive the three necessary conversions. To solve for Y impedance Z1, we would multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to node A. This would be ZCA and ZAB. Then we would divide this by the sum of all three delta impedance elements, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Similarly, to solve for Y impedance Z2, we would multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to node B. This would be ZAB and ZBC. Then we would divide this by the sum of all three delta impedance elements, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Finally, to solve for Y impedance Z3, we would multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to node C. This would be ZBC and ZCA. Then we would divide this by the sum of all three delta impedance elements, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Do not remember these three formulas. Remember this single simple descriptive formula. To convert from a delta to a Y configuration at each node, multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to that node and then divide this by the sum of all three delta impedance elements. Note the denominator is the same for all three formulas. Only the numerator changes. Let's now discuss the reverse process, exchanging a Y configuration for an equivalent delta configuration. There similarly exists a general use formula that can be applied for all three delta impedance elements. When solving for a particular delta equivalent impedance element, that impedance element is equal to the summation of all possible products of the Y impedance elements taken two at a time, divided by the impedance element attached to the node across from it. You can remember this simple descriptive formula and use it to derive the other three conversions. To solve for ZAB, the equivalent delta impedance element between node A and B, take the summation of all possible products of the Y impedance elements taken two at a time. Z1 times Z2 plus Z2 times Z3 plus Z3 times Z1. Then divide this by the impedance element attached to the node directly across from AB, in this case, Z3. Similarly, to solve for ZBC, the equivalent delta impedance element between node B and C, take the summation of all possible products of the Y impedance elements taken two at a time. Z1 times Z2 plus Z2 times Z3 plus Z3 times Z1 divided by the impedance element directly across from BC, in this case, Z1. 
Finally, to solve for ZCA, the equivalent delta impedance element between nodes C and A, take the summation of all possible products of the Y impedance elements taken two at a time, Z1 times Z2 plus Z2 times Z3 plus Z3 times Z1 divided by the impedance element directly across from nodes C and A, in this case, Z2. Again, do not remember these three formulas. Remember this single formula. To convert from a Y to a delta configuration at each node, take the summation of all possible products of the Y impedance elements taken two at a time divided by the opposite impedance element. You can remember this single simple descriptive formula and use it to derive the other three necessary conversions. In this scenario, note that the numerator is the same for all three formulas, only the denominator changes. Let's put these conversion procedures to the test. Here is a three terminal delta configuration featuring an impedance of 67 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees between nodes A and B, an impedance of 75 ohms at an angle of negative 10 degrees between nodes B and C, and finally an impedance of 80 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees between nodes C and A. Let's see if we can convert this to an equivalent Y configuration. To solve for Y impedance Z1, we would multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to node A. This would be ZCA and ZAB. Then we divide this by the sum of all delta impedances, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Our formula suggests Y impedance Z1 is 25.1 ohms at an angle of 33.2 degrees directly attached to node A. Note that each delta to Y conversion necessitates the use of the same denominator, the summation of all delta impedances, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. If you want to save yourself some time, don't recalculate the sum, just reuse it. To solve for Y impedance Z2, we would multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to node B. Then we divide this by a previously calculated sum of all delta impedances, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Our formula suggests that Y impedance Z2 is 23.8 ohms at an angle of negative 1.8 degrees. Finally, to solve for Y impedance Z3, we would multiply the two delta impedance elements connected to node C. This would be ZBC and ZCA. Then we divide this by our previously calculated sum of all delta impedances, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Our formula suggests Y impedance Z3 is 28.1 ohms at an angle of 3.2 degrees directly connected to node C. Our equivalent Y configuration features Z1, an impedance of 25.1 ohms at an angle of 33.2 degrees attached to node A, Z2, an impedance of 23.8 ohms at an angle of negative 1.8 degrees attached to node B, and Z3, an impedance of 28.1 ohms at an angle of 3.2 degrees connected to node C. Ideally, one should be able to exchange our previous delta configuration with this new Y configuration and the circuit, source, or sources attached to these three nodes will be none the wiser to the substitution. Let's try the reverse procedure and convert from a Y to a delta configuration. Here's a three terminal circuit featuring Z1, an impedance of 25.1 ohms at an angle of 33.2 degrees connected to node A. Z2, an impedance of 23.8 ohms at an angle of negative 1.8 degrees connected to node B. And Z3, an impedance element of 28.1 ohms at an angle of 3.2 degrees connected to node C. Yes, the marginally observant among you should realize that this is the exact same Y configuration we just solved for from our previous illustrated example problem. If everything I've been telling you is true, our impending Y to delta conversion should return us to the original delta configuration. That's the point. An equivalency between these two three terminal networks allows us to substitute one for the other and vice versa. Ideally, any circuit, source, or sources attached to these three nodes should be none the wiser to the substitution. To solve for delta impedance ZAB, take the summation of all possible products of the Y impedances taken two at a time, Z1 times Z2 plus Z2 times Z3 plus Z3 times Z1 divided by the opposite Y impedance, in this case Z3. Our formula suggests that ZAB is 67 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. Note each Y to delta conversion necessitates the use of the same numerator, the summation of all possible products of the Y impedances taken two at a time, Z1 times Z2 plus Z2 times Z3 plus Z3 times Z1. 
If you want to save yourself some time, don't recalculate this number, just reuse it. To solve for delta impedance ZBC, take the previously calculated numerator divided by the opposite Y impedance, in this case, Z1. Our formula suggests ZBC is 75 ohms at an angle of negative 10 degrees. Finally, to solve for delta impedance ZCA, take the previously calculated numerator and divide it by the opposite Y impedance, in this case, Z2. Our formula suggests ZBC is 80 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Our equivalent delta configuration features ZAB, an impedance of 67 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees between nodes A and B. ZBC, an impedance of 75 ohms at an angle of negative 10 degrees between nodes B and C. And finally, ZCA, an impedance of 80 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees between nodes C and A. Ideally, one should be able to exchange our previous delta configuration with this new Y configuration, and the circuit, source, or sources attached to these three nodes would be none the wiser to the substitution. Additionally, you should be extremely satisfied that this second conversion from a Y to a delta returned us to the original delta configuration we started with. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct. Let's put your understanding of delta and Y conversions to the test with this set of illustrated example problems. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot at converting these two three terminal configurations to their other world equivalent. If you're given a delta configuration, convert it into an equivalent Y, and if you're given a Y configuration, convert it into an equivalent delta. You'll note I've not identified the impedance elements, nor assigned external nodes, nor used colors for these different configurations. That's your job. As long as you stay organized and consistent, your results should match mine despite different initial assignments. This being said, identifying errors might be hard in a free-for-all, and as such, let's say the top node is A, the lower right node is B, and the lower left node is C. Additionally, you'll note the second illustrated example features three identical impedance elements. You should notice something pretty interesting about the resultant conversion. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first illustrated example problem features a Y configuration of three impedance elements, and we've been asked to convert it to an equivalent delta configuration. To solve for delta impedance ZAB, take the summation of all possible products of the Y impedances taken two at a time. Z1 times Z2, Z2 times Z3, plus Z3 times Z1, and then divide this by the opposite Y impedance, in this case, Z3. Our formula suggests delta impedance ZAB is 263.3 ohms at an angle of negative 5.4 degrees. Note each subsequent Y to delta conversion will necessitate the use of the same numerator, the summation of all possible products of the Y impedances taken two at a time. Save yourself time and don't recalculate this number, just reuse it. To solve for delta impedance ZBC, take the previously calculated numerator and divide it by the opposite Y impedance, in this case Z1. Our formula suggests ZBC is 397.5 ohms at an angle of negative 20.4 degrees. Finally, to solve for delta impedance ZCA, take the previously calculated numerator and divide it by the opposite Y impedance, in this case, Z2. Our formula suggests ZCA is 170.3 ohms at an angle of 29.6 degrees. Our equivalent delta configuration features ZAB, an impedance of 263.3 ohms at an angle of negative 5.4 degrees between nodes A and B. ZBC, an impedance of 397.5 ohms at an angle of negative 20.4 degrees between nodes B and C. And finally, ZCA, an impedance of 170.3 ohms at an angle of 29.6 degrees between nodes C and A. Ideally, one should be able to exchange our previous delta configuration with this new Y configuration, and the circuit, source, or sources attached to these three nodes would be none the wiser to the substitution. Our second illustrated example features a delta configuration of three identical impedance elements, and we've been asked to convert it into an equivalent Y configuration. This is what's known as a balanced network, and that all legs of the delta are identical. Ideally, the impedance elements of our equivalent Y configuration should also be identical and balanced. Application of the delta to Y conversion formula for our first Y impedance Z1 yields an interesting result. Y impedance Z1 is the product of the two delta impedance elements connected to node A, ZCA and ZAB, 
divided by the sum of all delta impedances, ZAB plus ZBC plus ZCA. Our formula suggests Y impedance Z1 is 50 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees attached to node A. Note because every impedance element in this balanced delta configuration is identical, a simplification I'm calling Z delta, the Y conversion calculation for any Y impedance can be simplified as one third Z delta. This shortcut suggests Z2 is also 50 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees, only it's attached to node B. And finally, Z3 is also 50 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees, only it's attached to node C. Ideally, one should be able to exchange our previously balanced delta configuration with this new balanced Y configuration, and the circuit, source, or sources attached to these three nodes will be none the wiser to the substitution. In summary, impedance elements for an equivalent balanced Y configuration are one-third the magnitude of impedance elements in a balanced delta configuration. Zy equals Z delta over 3. Similarly, an algebraic manipulation of this observation suggests that impedance elements for an equivalent balanced delta configuration are three times the magnitude of impedance elements in a balanced Y configuration. Z delta equals 3 Zy. These make great shortcuts when dealing with balanced delta and Y configurations. Alright, that's about it for delta and Y conversions featuring complex impedances. In conclusion, this lecture presented means of converting between two different three terminal networks known as delta and Y configurations. Later lectures will make use of this technique to simplify complex circuits. Delta and Y conversions allow a degree of flexibility in circuit analysis scenarios, and establishing an equivalency between these two configurations allows one to escape seemingly inescapable circuit analysis traps. Remember to review this material and practice test technique as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.